So ecosystem science and conservation is one of the broader programs within concentrations within the MEM degree. And it's broad because conservation can mean a lot of different things. It could mean that you're like crazy interested in rare butterflies or, or salamanders in the Southern Appalachian Mountains or something like that and you want to save that species. It could mean that you're interested in, in designing resilient coastal systems in face of sea level rise. It could mean lots of things. It could mean you're interested in, in uh, private markets for ecosystem services and, and you know, private financing and conservation. So there's lots of stuff going on in conservation and ecosystem management. The way that we deal with that, and in particular the way we deal with that given an incoming class like you that, that includes biology undergrad majors and social scientists and physics majors and you know, people with one of my favorite students from recently got a degree in dance. Um, so you come from lots of different starting points into a, into a career track that is incredibly heterogeneous. So the question really is how do we deal with that as a school and as a program? The way that we have done that here is to is to force you to not just encourage you, but to force you to actually declare when you get here um, two things. One is what your concentration is going to focus on in terms of a, the kind of work you want to do. So I want to do wetlands. I want to do rare birds. I want to do whatever tropical forest. Um, so you're going to tell us what you want to do, what sector you want to work in, and then what your toolkit is going to be in that place. So I want to work, I want to do a lot of GIS stuff. I want to do field biology. I like nature. I want to be out in it. I don't want to be sitting in a computer. Um, I want to be uh, working with people and do community-based stuff with stakeholders. So tell me what your topic of interest is. Tell me what the toolkit is that you're going to use to sort of get work done in that space. And we will work with you then to come up with a bunch of courses that will satisfy what you want to do, that will give you the, the, the core knowledge that you need and the, and the deeper knowledge you need and the specialization and the tools of the trade to do that work. Right. So that's the plan. We do that with, a, I checked your package of stuff here to make sure that you don't have what I wanted to show you, which is to go along with the piece of paper you got when you walked in here. There's also on our website a, an Excel spreadsheet that has uh, just a bunch of empty lines on it that are in four categories. One of those is core knowledge. So you'll take a bunch of core courses, and those are core natural science courses and core social sciences. Which of those you take will depend on your topic of interest and what you did as an undergrad or what kind of work experience you have. So you'll sort of choose from a menu of a bunch of courses, the ones that will serve you well. Um, there's another bunch of lines on that spreadsheet that are tool courses, and those include analytics tool tools like statistics and, and, and population viability analysis, things like that, but also um, practical skills and people skills, so decision analysis, um, stakeholder participatory techniques, uh, conflict resolution, things like that. You'll assemble a toolkit on that planning sheet, and then you'll also specify a bunch of specializing courses that are deeper knowledge in an area where you really want to specialize. So if you're interested in wetlands, wetlands ecology is a core natural science, and Wetland restoration is a very applied, sort of deeper, specialized natural science course. So we work with you to sort of come up with a curriculum before school starts for two years that will get you out with a workable set of courses that give you the knowledge you need to work where you want, told us you wanted to work and the, the tools you'll need to work in that space. So topic, toolkit, right? Important. Some of you will come into that first session with your advisor before school even starts in the fall and you'll know exactly what you want to do. And some of you will be largely clueless other than that you think conservation is really important and you would like to work to save nature. And then those of you that think you already know what you want to do will take a bunch of courses and you'll find out that you are not as sure as you were. And you'll change your mind because you'll take courses and stuff you didn't know about. Right? And then people that have really broad interest will focus those interests because you'll take courses that lead you down a path and you'll redo your curriculum planning sheets in your second semester again for a two-year program and you can do that three semesters you can change it every time you can't change it your last semester really because it's too late um, but you will evolve while you're here in terms of your interest and, and what kind of things you need and want and we will sort of work with you along the way to make sure that you get what you want um, but also to make sure that you get what you need. So the task is to assemble a package of courses and skills that actually makes sense. You can't just take a bunch of stuff here and graduate in two years, having taken a lot of interesting courses but being functionally useless. <laughs> we will insist that you have a bunch of courses that work together. Only faculty are allowed to be functionally useless. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because we didn't get our degrees from programs like this. <laughs> 
So um, that's the ESC part of the MEM degree. The MF degree is accredited by the Society of American Foresters. They dictate um, that you need to get competency in five core areas, competency areas, but it's the same approach of an NUing system where you choose courses from categories to sort of give you what you need. And I'll let, having just talked about the MF program, I'll let you talk about the MF program. Now. And then we will um, maybe stop for questions. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Dean. And so um, I'm co-chair of the Master of Forestry program with Ram Oren, who's over there in the corner. So if you have hard questions, uh, Ram will answer them. <laughs> uh, so um, I think of forestry as uh, basically ecology applied to forests with a human twist. Uh, forests are really complex ecosystems. Uh, humans demand a lot from them. Uh, they're, uh, it's challenging in both ecological terms and socioeconomic terms to, to figure out how to manage them to meet that big range of demands in a sustainable way. Uh, this is a, a traditional field, uh, uh, yeah, field. So you know, I think we can all think of um, stereotypes like you know Paul Bunyan with the axe over the shoulder, all right, and and we we do wear uh, plaid shirts uh, sometimes, all right. So, so <laughs> yeah. although Tim's actually an MEM wearing a plaid shirt and a camouflage hat, but, yeah. you want to be an MF, right? You are in an honorary way. Um, so, yeah, there's a sense of, of tradition, but this is also a really innovative field. And I can't think of another natural resource field where you could arguably make the claim that we've made a transition to sustainability. And so it's the case that the world grows as much wood fiber as we use, okay? Despite all the population growth, all the economic growth, okay? And this is because of the work of foresters, the research, the practice, figuring out ways to manage forests uh, more successfully and, and uh, in a higher productive way. So. Use paper without feeling guilty, okay? But you know, other resources, we can't say this. And it's because of, of, of the research that's gone in and, and the training. So there's a lot of success there. And it's not only about timber. Uh, there's also innovation around the management of forests for other uses. Uh, forests are at the center of the whole movement to um, create new uh, uh, ways of financing uh, conservation through conservation easements, through payments for water programs, through carbon payments, okay? Uh, thermal credits to protect streams so that the um, uh, the fish in the streams are, uh, have, have uh, more uh, 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 desirable uh, habitat. So, so there's a lot that's happening on the non-market side, all those important um, uh, uh, forest goods and services. My own research is largely focused on that. I'm an economist and I try to figure out how important non-market aspects of tropical rainforests are. Um, if you're not convinced that forestry is cool, um, Apple invests in forests right now. What company is cooler than Apple, right? And so there's a lot of neat stuff happening out of forests. Uh, forests are connected just about every big environmental issue, climate change, biodiversity, conservation, water resources, you name it. Um, the, the program, I'll just say in brief, uh, you've got details on this, but we expect you, well, the first thing I'll mention, this is a professionally accredited program, okay? So there is a society that accredits this. So when you graduate, you are a card-carrying forester as certified by the Society of American Foresters. And there are certain uh, organizations that want to see that professional accreditation. But in this program, you learn how to collect data in forests, how to measure them. You learn how to analyze that data. Uh, you learn the biological, ecological underpinnings of how forests work and how they respond if humans intervene in them. You learn about the socioeconomic side, okay, humans, and, and how to uh, understand you know, human motivations with respect to natural resources, the economics, at the policy. And then, uh, fifthly, management. How do you put that together? So here we've got uh, an ecosystem uh, that... Uh, is, is kind of like a factory, right? The things it can produce depending on what you put in and, and how you manage it, and, and that'll affect what, it, what comes out, but what do you want to manage it for? Okay, what are, the, what are the constraints you face, the cost constraints, for example? So you'll learn all about those things through this program. A few, uh, hit on four points why Duke is a, a great place to study forestry. Um, history, okay, um, forestry actually started in North Carolina. It's arguably the, the oldest science-based um, form of natural resource management, I think, of, of any type. Okay, it started in the western part of the state, a lot of history here. Um, we started in the 1930s with the Duke Forest and the, the forest program there. Um, we've got lots of alums out there who've done fabulous work. Forest History Society is located here in Durham and, and they're partners of ours on, on various activities. So there's a lot of history around this. Um, secondly, the Duke Forest is right next door. Okay, um, and so, and you'll be there tonight if you go to the campfire. All right, so please, please do, um, I'll be there too. Um, so when I teach the Duke Forest Practicum, which I don't really teach, people who actually know practical forestry teach it, I just I show up and introduce them and they do the, the stuff and I walk around in the woods. 
Uh, when we do that, we, we get in the van, and in five, ten minutes, we're out in the Duke Forest. So you don't have to drive an hour and a half to get out there. It's, it's right next door, um, which saves you a lot of time. Um, and we have a, a fantastic uh, professional staff there. Um, third, just all that's going around, going on in this area, the nonprofit organizations, the for-profit organizations, government agencies that are involved in forestry. There's a, this is a real center for innovation in forestry. Um, and, and lastly, um, you know, our, uh, our faculty uh, has expertise on this wide range of issues connected to forestry. So Rom and Sari Palmroth, uh, J.C. Domek, um, all have a lot of expertise on forest carbon. And then we have Brian Murray, who has expertise on the economic side of that, complementing that expertise on the ecology side. We have great expertise in spatial analysis, uh, Jennifer and, and, and others here. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's, there are lots of, there's lots of expertise in the faculty that ties into that, uh, to that program.